Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. On the last episode, we learned how to download images and use them on our UI. And in this video, we're going to learn how to keep those images in our device so that next time we don't have to download them, but we can just quickly load them from memory. So the first thing we're going to do is create a class that is going to help us manage all these things. It's going to be in charge of saving images, checking if the image already exists and all these kind of things. So we're going to create a new c -sharp script and I'm just going to call it image manager for the sake of simplicity. Now we're going to be accessing these from different classes. So I'm going to make this a singleton by making a public static image manager instance. All right. And um, we have to set this of course here in the start. So instant is equals this, but before that we check if instance is not null we're going to destroy the instance and we're going to return so basically this is if we are the first game object with this class in it we're going to set the instant to this and then if there is another object like a duplicate or something it's going to say hey the public static instance is not null so i'm the second one I'm just going to destroy myself and stop here. So before we continue, uh, let's type all the functions that we have to make to make this work. I'm just going to put them here as a comment. So let's do a to do. So we have to make a function that checks if image already exists. Um, oh yeah, we have to have a path for the images. So make a base path, then we need to also have a function to save images and a function to load images, which is pretty straightforward. For that, we're going to be using uh, IO, where let's add that right now here. Up here, we just type using system.io, which stands for input and output. All right, we've used this before, I think, and with this, we do all like write bytes and write text into our memory. All right, let's do this. So make a base path. All right, this is pretty simple. We are going to have a string variable that is going to be called base path. And now I'm only going to be working for the icons. All right, so all the images we're going to be working with are icons for the items, but you could have different base paths you could have a base path for your textures, for your avatars, for your icons, and so on. So this one, um, I'm just going to have a general one that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to set it down here on the start function. So base path is equals to application dot persistent data path. All right. And I'm going to add a directory that I'm going to call images. All right. And use a slash there. And there we go. All right, so down here, we're just going to do if not directory dot exists. So if the directory doesn't exist, uh, and of course we're talking about the base path directory, then we're going to create that directory. So we're going to do directory dot create directory, and we're going to pass the base path. And that's it. Awesome. Now we finished the first thing. Now we need to check if image already exists. So how we do that? Again, pretty simple. So we're going to make a Boolean type function, image exists, and we need to give it a name. And in our case, the name of each image is just the name of the, is the item ID that we have for each icon. We're going to do if file dot exists again very similar but now we're going to combine the base path with the name all right and if you had uh, different directories for different type of images uh, you should have two parameters like with the base path and then the name of the image or just getting the full path to the image also could work so um, base path plus name and uh, here we are going to return true and then return false. All right, and I did this like this because I want you to think, how can we improve this code? 
all right I think I said it in a previous video but if you're doing if something return true and then return false it's much cleaner and easier to just copy your conditional statement all right so we copy that and we return that so return file exists and the name and the path so basically that is the same that we just had because we're going to return true or false depending on whether this is true or false all right so we have our function to check if our image exists all right so we finish point number one and zero now we have to do point number two save images so how do we save images also is pretty simple first we need to define what format we're going to use to save our images and we're just going to save them as a byte array so we're going to do a void function void save image all right we need a name for our image so string dot name but we also need the data of our image so basically the byte array and we're going to call these bytes or image you can call it whatever you want so again we're going to use the file library so file dot write all bytes and we're going to again give it a path and a byte array so we give it our base path plus the name of our image so plus name and then we pass the bytes all right so save image and we write all those bytes into this path okay pretty simple awesome save images now we need to load images and again it's pretty simple to load images it's pretty similar to save image but this time we want to return a byte array so byte load image and we need to have the of course the name of our image and, and again if you had the different paths to different folders you should have the whole path as a parameter so we're going to do again file dot read all bytes and here we're going to pass the base path plus our name and of course we this returns a byte array so we want to return this all right and uh, it would be good practice to check if the image exists first so we could do something like this if image exists so if image exists we return that else return an empty array all right so new byte like that and it actually I think it would look better if we type it like this and I think it looks better if we type it like this all right so when we load an image we create an empty byte array and if the image exists we load that image into the byte array otherwise we are going to return an empty byte array which will let people know that oh you loaded an image but the array is empty so that means that your image could not be found we're getting somewhere now the final thing we have to do in this class for now is try to get the image well that is pretty much done here already so we could do load image and it's already trying to get the image right so if we make this public we should be able to get the try to get the image from the item manager for example so item manager could say all right I'm trying to get I'm trying to load this image but I received a empty byte array so I have to download the image and save it and otherwise if I got something on this byte array that means it was not empty so I'm going to use that and I can forget about downloading the image from the server so let's do that let's go to item manager and here we have the action so here in this for loop we had an action that downloads the image um, here we start a coroutine we pass a callback that gets us a download sprite and that downloaded sprite is then used here all right this is going to get a little bit complicated because uh, there's a few things we have to do first we're getting a sprite here 
and we want to get a byte array so that we can pass it to image manager and then image manager can decide whether or not it has to save it or load it so first we need to get bytes instead of sprite then we're going to try to get image then we're going to download image only if we couldn't and we're going to save in our device if we download it all right so that's those are the things we have to do so all right first things first get bytes instead of sprites so now here our action has a sprite as a parameter so we simply have to change these to byte array like that and uh, of course that's going to affect a whole chain of things uh, because first of all we're trying to save that directly into that so first let me rename these to downloaded bytes all right downloaded bytes and we're going to do the conversion here so one thing we have to do here is convert bytes into sprite here yeah let's fix that here first and um, we have to go to web because uh, in web is actually where we have our action here uh, so we have to change that there for a byte array as well so we're going to actually just return this so we're just going to give this uh, the original data is already what we need to give to our item manager through the callback so we're going to copy this uh, we're actually going to cut this because we don't need it here anymore we are just going to type bytes here because we just want the bytes that come from the download handler in the form of data and in item manager we're going to convert the bytes into sprite here create texture 2d texture load image bytes uh, so this becomes the download bytes so downloaded bytes uh, wait I type I have a typo there downloaded bytes and uh, then we create the sprite and then of course we set the sprite to not the downloaded bytes but the sprite we created now I don't feel comfortable having all these here especially because if we have something similar somewhere else we're going to type all these again so we're going to cut this one more time and we're going to use the image manager all right or you could have a helper class I usually do a helper class that has all the conversion functions so you could have helper dot bytes to sprite or something like that uh, I'm just going to do it here this time so public sprite bytes to sprite and we pass in a byte array parameter call it bytes and we paste what we had there and we at the end return sprite all right so we return that sprite that we created from these bytes here all right now if we go back to item manager instead of doing all that we can simply do sprite sprite equals image manager dot instance dot bytes to sprite and we pass in the downloaded bytes and there we go uh, looks a little bit better now get the bytes instead of the sprite that's done try to get the image all right up here we're going to try to get the image from the image manager for that we just need to have the name of the image that we're trying to download uh, and that is just the item ID again pretty straightforward we do image manager dot instance dot load image item ID but I cannot just call this function I need to create a variable with this so I'm going to again do a byte array call it bytes and set it equal to all this now depending on whether this is empty or not we can decide whether or not we want to do this so this is pretty fun actually if bytes dot length is equals to zero all right we're going to do all this else 
if the bytes, the byte array was not zero, so we had something there, we are going to, oops, we are going to uh, set that image from the bytes here. Basically the same we do here, but this time, uh, instead of doing the downloaded bytes, we're just using the bytes. Awesome. Load from device. This is pretty cool. Awesome. So try to get image, download image only if we couldn't get the image, that's done. Now we have to save the image in our device if we download it. All right, so here we add one more line within the action. Remember, the action only happens after we have received the data from the web. So after it's done loading from the internet. Again, pretty straightforward. Item man, no, no, item manager, sorry, image manager dot instance dot save image. And that's not public. We have to make it public. So here public void save image. We're going to use that. So save image and we have to pass the name of the image, which we know is the item ID. And we know the bytes because those are the downloaded bytes. And that's what we need. That's why we had to have the action receiving bytes instead of the sprite from the web. That's why we, we had to remove the sprite conversion from here because we wanted to get the bytes here first. So save image, downloaded bytes and its name. And that should work because we're saying save image. We're passing a name a by, uh, and the array of bytes. And we're just using the system function, which write all bytes into a file in our directory. Oof, I think we're done, guys. So <laughs> let's try it. And <laughs> probably it's going to have errors. Uh, but we still have to try. Remember to open exam before we start that. Um, and let's try it. Test user. One, two, three, four, five, six. Log in. And we have an error, <laughs> of course. Hey, guys. Before we continue, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would really help me a lot. Thank you so much. One, two, three, four, five, six, log in, and we have an error, <laughs> of course. And of course, we haven't even put our script in a, in a game object. So image manager, we're just going to drag it here so that it can actually have a start function occur in the first place. So your application.persistent data path is located here in your user folder, app data, local low, default company or whatever company name you're using and the name of your project. So I'm going to run this now. We don't have the folder here. And of course we don't have the files, the images. So let's see if after we run it, we, we get them there. So test user one, two, three, four, five, six, log in. We downloaded the images. So that part didn't break. And now if we go here, now we have an images folder and if we open it, we have one, two and three, which is actually the names, the IDs of each of these items. <laughs> That's awesome. And as you see, it's not a PNG file. It's just a file. It's just a bunch of bytes. So it's just a file. Uh, this is awesome. So now uh, I just want to check something. So here, if we, we call this function, we're going to do a simple debug.log. So debug.log downloading icon plus item ID. I just want to know if we're loading any icon from here. Now uh, let's delete this. Let's delete this one, one time first. We delete that. Now we play it. So it shouldn't find it. So the files do not exist right now. So we should see download icon one, downloading icon two, and here downloading icon three. Awesome. So we're downloading the icons. Now, if we start this one more time, since they are now in our computer, we should not see the downloading icon message. So test user one, two, three, four, five, six, log in. <laughs> awesome. 
So uh, yeah, we didn't download the icons this time because we're down, uh, we're loading it actually from our device, and uh, we can see this one more time if we just delete like uh, the file number two, and we do this one more time, log in, and now we see the message only for icon number two. Awesome guys, we did it. So this is pretty cool because now we don't have to download images all the time. We can actually keep them in our user's device. And of course, this depends if you want to uh, spend less mobile data. For example, if you're making a mobile game, uh, you don't want them to use their internet data as much. You can do stuff like this. All right, so we managed to get the three files. It worked. And now for the next episode, what we're going to do is also have a version control for these images. So we could have these images, but what happens if some of our staff updated an icon in our server? The game would say, all right, I already have this, so I don't have to download the new icon. So that's why we're going to have a dictionary for each image with its current version. So if we download an image from the server with a higher version, we're going to need to update it also. So that's going to be for the next video, guys. For now, thank you so much. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. I hope you are enjoying these videos. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will see you all on the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.